When Win Ti Hien moved into the old quarter of Hanoi 40 years ago, she had no idea what wastewater problems awaited her. Like all her neighbors, she tipped the dishwater into the gutter. Often the water pressure is too low to flush the toilet, and there's no sewer system. All the waste goes from here into a septic tank under the house. My husband and I built this house four years ago, and we still haven't been able to empty the septic tank. Most of the septic systems in Hanoi have never been emptied. And on the rare occasion that the collected solids are removed from a tank, they're usually dumped in illegal landfills outside the city. Most residents can't afford the transport anyway. But now, scientists are trying to use the waste to generate energy. They're also looking to improve the water quality, which has been on the decline for years. Hanoi's population is rising rapidly. Five years ago, three million people lived here. Today, there are six and a half million residents. And by 2030, that number is expected to reach over 10 million. At the city's markets, masses of bio-waste just land on the street. But this waste, together with the septic waste from the tanks, would be ideal for generating heat, electricity and fertilizer. In Germany, scientists are working on a strategy that could help. Water technology engineers in Darmstadt have built a test facility. Their reactor produces a sludge that can be turned into fertilizer and biogas that can be burned to generate electrical power. Engineer Peter Kornel develops concepts for water supplies and wastewater management in rapidly growing cities. We're using the example of Hanoi because we have a collaboration there. We're using the figures from Hanoi and trying to simulate the composition of Hanoi's waste. We could equally well do this for other large cities. The mixture of biomass and sewage has to be fine-tuned to reproduce the special Hanoi blend, so that the right bacteria will be able to biodegrade it. The wastewater will be recycled to help flush the toilet, for example. The German researchers have built a similar plant in Hanoi. Together with their Vietnamese partners, they want to see how the concept works here. A water engineer from one of Hanoi's national universities has been commissioned by the government for this project. Five years ago, nobody thought in Hanoi you can burn out the biogas to produce electricity. But Hanoi is working on that project now. For the past 30 years, Peter Cornell has been chasing down stinking water. Wherever he finds overflowing septic tanks spilling into the gutters, he wants to do something about it. Particularly because people prepare and eat their food nearby. The engineers say this is an intolerable situation, one that poses a threat to public health. People here in the old part of town are quite aware of the close proximity of feces and food. We wastewater engineers refer to it jokingly as the anal-oral bypass. In other words, how short the pathway is from fecal bacteria to food. Hanoi doesn't have a sewage treatment plant, so all the dirty water from the gutters ends up unfiltered in the river. 900 tons of sludge have to be dredged here every day. But that may now change. Uh, earlier it was a very beautiful river, some hundred years ago, where a king could uh, go by boat on, on this river. But with a fast-growing city, uh, it started to receive wastewater, discharging without treatment. And that's why we see now the color is black. You could turn around to a beautiful um, recreation yeah. area. I mean, that, that would be the vision of 
for the future. The engineers hope to first implement this system in a newly built up area, where there are still septic tanks. Their concept involves reusing the wastewater. Water from showers and toilets are treated separately. All the organic waste is collected. Once the solid sewage and green waste are seen as potentially valuable, it becomes worthwhile to transport them. In small digester facilities close to the residential areas, they can be used to make electricity, fertilizer for farming and heat. And as the city grows, more of the modular plants can be added. When the waste material is broken down by bacteria, it produces biogas, which can be fed into a plant to produce electricity and heat that is then returned to the households. These decentralized facilities form a closed circuit. Peter Cornell is on the lookout for an area with 20,000 residents for his first pilot plant. You can see a lot of new houses here. That means they're building apartments for several thousand residents. So it'd make sense to build a supply and recycling center here. The concept has already attracted interest. So Hanoi could be the first megacity worldwide to implement this new system for the sustainable reuse of household waste.